So you've agreed to this, I think, uh, unknowingly, <laughs> but we're going to do something called speed golf. Okay. Similar to your shots fired. So I have some yeah, questions. Normally, I'm Are the you one ready? making other people uncomfortable, <laughs> not the other way around. Okay. So nine questions. We'll play nine holes. Okay. I like that. All right. What's your handicap or what kind of golfer are you? I am a bad, I'm a fun golfer. That's what I like to tell people. <laughs> That's the best kind of yes, golfer. Yes. I am the queen of let's go out and play nine holes, throw a couple beers in the back, let's get our playlist going and have fun. That's the way the game should be. Right? That's how, right? There's it's nothing not wrong thing. with that. Nothing wrong no, with that. No, thank you. I agree with that. Okay. What's in your golf bag right now? What is in my golf bag? Of course, Epic Driver, right? Steelhead mm -hmm. XR mm -hmm. irons. I do have an Odyssey number one, but I am holding out right now for the Toulon Latrobe putter because being from Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. I just feel like that is going to be the magic putter I've been waiting for my whole life. <laughs> okay. What is the uh, favorite club in your bag or best part of your game? So this is a weird answer, but my four iron. I have always been able to strike my four iron since I was in junior golf. And I know that's supposed to be the hardest club to hit, but I just have Absolutely. so much confidence with it. You never know. So my four Lucky iron, club. hands yeah. down, my favorite club, always the one I, it's, I had like the driver yips for a long time. I only took four iron off the tee for like two <laughs> years. <laughs> okay, so best moment so far working for Callaway. Oh, there's a lot of them. I will say the one Probably when I first started my first week with Callaway was at Augusta, which how do you beat that, right? And we're in the truck, and I'm kind of nervous about making a good first impression. And I walk in, and Bones is in there. Mm. And he comes up, and you know, he, he congratulates me on the move to Callaway, which I was pumped he even knew that I made the move to Callaway. And I said, well, what do you think about sitting with us and doing a little interview for a couple of minutes? He goes, absolutely. And he ended up sitting there with us for 20 minutes telling That's us cool. these incredible Phil and Bones stories. Mm. And I felt like that was... I could relax then a little bit. You know, I, everything just kind of came together. Perfect timing, perfect place, perfect person. Yeah. Um, that was probably one of my favorite moments just because he told us stories that ended up circulating all throughout media, which, mm -hmm. again, part of the reason that we're here, right, to make an impact, you know, uh, in the bigger picture, not just within the consumer you know, world. Excellent. Okay. More likely to three putt or hit it out of bounds. <laughs> oh, three <laughs> putt. I'm such a head case. I'm a head case. On the greens, so yeah. Maybe the putt. new Latrobe putter is going to help. I you think, never know. I think that putter is going to eliminate all the three putts. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So dream foursome, and where would you tee it up? Dream foursome. So I have to say, I would love to play with my grandmother, my grandfather, and my mom's side. They both have passed away, but they were huge golfers. They met on the golf course. They still say to this day, whenever we all pass away, we're kind of a morbid family. We are all going to meet on the first tee in heaven. Like we have, that is our meeting place in heaven. Cool. So probably my grandfather, my grandmother's, I never got to play with them. Beyonce and me. Well, Beyonce, why not, right? Why wouldn't you want to play with Beyonce? <laughs> and I feel like my Mamie and Beyonce would really hit it off. There you go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Most famous person you've ever met? Hmm. That's a good question. I think you have to say Tiger Woods, right? I mean, I would think Tiger talk Woods about is a guy there. that just... Yeah makes such a huge impact. Okay, one thing that uh, people should know about PGA Tour players, they probably don't. Mm. I would say the perception that these guys have everything financially so that their lives are so easy. I think you hear a lot of these guys, oh, stop whining, stop complaining, you have it all. These guys have a whole other set of problems that we could never relate to or understand. And I have a problem with you know seeing people on social media you know the trolls and stuff yep. just come down yep. so hard on these guys you know when they're injured trying to come back from injury not performing at their peak performance you know there's so much that these guys they are absolutely first world problems but just because they have more of what we all want doesn't mean that they don't have their own Mm -hmm. set of problems too you know take it a little easy on these guys <laughs> you know it's a whole different world out there so and i think people don't realize just how hard these guys work right for some of them maybe it comes easy for most of them they work incredibly hard yeah. they're very detailed with their schedules and it's amazing that's why they're the best well, i mean in the world. these guys live and die by their golf game mm -hmm. you know and that's i mean think about that when we go out on weekends and it makes us angry for a day Mm -hmm. And this, and that's just like a fun part of our life. This is their whole lives that they are, and guys especially that go on these horrible, you know, little bouts of like 10 straight missed cuts or stuff like that. Like I, their lows are very, very low. So mm -hmm. I, I would say be wary of wanting to attack these guys for having it all and being, you know, 
appearing to maybe not be appreciative. I think they are, but I also think we can't relate to what they go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Tough out there. So hole number nine here, you, Harry, hashtag Chad, and AJ Volpel, <laughs> you're in one of those oh, escape rooms. You know what those are? Yeah. Where you, they give you clues and you try to get out. <laughs> yeah. You're in four different escape rooms. You each have your own room. Who gets out first and who never gets out? Oh my gosh. So it's me, Harry, Chad, and AJ. Who gets out first? I hate that I'm answering this. Like, <laughs> like I'm about to, because he's never gonna let me live. I think AJ gets out first. He gets out first, okay. He is so sneaky good at weird things that you're like, how did you figure that out? You know, so I think AJ gets out first. Mm -hmm. I probably never get out. Just indefinitely, you just I, live there for the well, rest of your life. Well, I mean, if it's like a science or a math problem, I'm literally never getting out, and I also have the worst <laughs> sense of direction. So I think a lot of things are going against me. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that was speed golf. Thank you very much, Amanda. How'd I do? You did very well. Oh, okay. You shot under par. Pace of play, okay. Pace of play was very okay. good. All right, good. Excellent. <laughs> Swing better, play better. Golf Tech.